is going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with some men's comics, and this, of course, is the three up, three down. That's right. We come at you every week with hot and cold market trends. We're giving you three of each of them, and we're getting into it right now with the three up portion, right, Jack? Absolutely. COVID-19 cannot stop the comic book market. Books are moving. We got books rising. We've got books falling. What's the first one on the list, Brian? The first one we have this week is Justice League Dark. Now, this is hot for a really good reason. One, great stories, but a lot of it is we're also hearing that bad robot HBO Max, J.J. Abrams news, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is what I just mentioned. Um, regardless of all of our social distancing, business is still being done. Announcements are still being made, and we are still getting Hollywood news. So at some point, the world's going to get back to normal. And when that happens, we are going to get a J.J. Abrams produced Justice League Dark television series for the HBO Max streaming service. I cannot be more excited, Brian, but I got to be honest with you. It kind of messes up my top 10 back issue lists because I've got some Justice League Dark keys coming up that I was really paying attention to at a certain price that they're not anymore. These books are exploding, whether it's Swamp Thing 49, Swamp Thing 50, whether you're buying uh, Swamp Thing Annual 2, um, whether you're buying... Justice League Dark number one, the first print, or the second print, or Justice or the, League Dark number nine. Yeah, the team um, up, right? Yeah, that we're Constantine. That's Constantine, which is really a key moment, kind of a book I cannot undersell because that team with Constantine in the lead, I think, is most likely what we're going to see adapted um, for the streaming service. So I love this property. This, this is really horror in superhero comics done right. Um, and yet still having like a, a positive kind of superhero vibe to it, right? Not really, be, they're not the bad guys. Um, so this is, this is exciting. We haven't seen yet the, the villain spec quite take off, but I'm starting to see some rumblings as people are starting to do their research, figure out what are the villains that most commonly um, go up against each of the characters individually from Justice League Dark, as well as, uh, you know, as a collective not only that, we're seeing uh, a, a lot of the individual characters who at some point have been in Justice League Dark, uh, who people are trying to speculate who is going to make up this team that we're going to see on HBO. So a lot of different books popping off from I Flash think you're going to see Rising some Zatanna books. Yeah, we're already seeing that. I would say, you know, Zatanna, um, Swamp Thing, Constantine, um, uh, dead man these are locks uh i would imagine i would i would look for demon um for sure demon number one is seeing some serious rises and that's a great that's a great that's a jack kirby book but moving into the next portion of the three up we are going to talk with Noel. now we had a lot of news this past week between later printings and store variants and there was a lot of fervor going on about it but either way Noel is definitely back in the news cycle yeah, a lot of debate between what the first cover appearance of Null is. And, you know, it's a firm policy on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. We don't play those comic politics, right? So I don't really care what the market decides to be the, the first cover. Um, I've often advocated to people, you know, play the market, sell both, uh, you know, have your hand in more than one pot. Then you don't have to be that big arguer. But regardless of that, what it really indicates is something I've already noticed. Um while I've been watching prices heavily during the COVID-19 situation, um, two books in the modern market that have stood out to me as some of the most steady um, holders in price in the modern market is, is really punchline and null. Uh, it, that Venom 3 book has consistently seen sales, consistently seen sales at the price that it was selling at prior to this whole situation. You know, and, these are characters that you would expect to be driven by storyline. So without the new books and these new stories, um, continuing to validate the, the characters and their place within the mythos of the books that they reside in. Because again, neither of these characters comes from a book called null or a book called punchline, right? They're from Batman and Venom. Um, but they have continued to show their relevancy. And just the fact that this argument would happen and these store variants would heat up and store and store re re retailers would sell out of these books just shows you um, how much interest there is. So I take like a little bit of a different perspective, Brian, when this type of stuff happens, instead of sitting there deciding which kind of camp I sit in, I go, you know what? People just really like null. Then the third 
upward trend we want to talk about this week is Something is Killing the Children. This is a big title, big series, and it also ties into a bunch of other series with that big news that came out where Netflix and Boom have that first look deal, but we've seen some movers, and one definitely we've seen a lot of movement on it is that Something is Killing the Children. We've talked about this on our top 10 boom blicks for Netflix. You can watch that video. It's on the channel right now. And then there's some more news. We've been watching it. The eBay prices are going up. But Jack, something's killing children. It was hot when it came out. And it's still hot. Yeah, the reality is we're not even the only ones talking about it at this point. Did you see Bleeding Cool has an article about something is killing children in Netflix? No, I didn't see it today. But it really doesn't surprise me. Like That book is on fire. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. So it talks about back issues. It talks about... Uh, big boom Netflix partnership news that we just all heard about. Yeah. And then um, there's one in here. It says also, it says it doesn't hurt that some of the biggest influencers are citing it on one of the series most likely to end up on Netflix. Oh, click that. Who's the biggest influencers? We're talking about James Tinian's Something is Killing the Children. This book has the best character in independent comics right now. Erica Slaughter is cool as hell. If she was a Marvel or a DC character, we'd be seeing- Yeah, cosplay all over the place. But I tell you what, when this ends up on Netflix, your wife, your girlfriend is going to love it because she's going to love to see this girl kicking ass the way she does in this book. So yeah, so as you guys can see, we had some fun there with that video, but Bleeding Cool is talking about it. They referenced our, our video on the top 10 uh, boom titles that we believe Netflix should be paying attention to that really apply to this particular first look deal. And it really seems like, Brian, while there are some others heating up, the unsound people like that safe bet and Bone Parish, definitely. Um, this book is the clear winner. This is the one that the market has latched onto. So yeah, there's no hiding the fact we're big fans of something that's killed in children. We really hope it gets made into a Netflix show. But with saying that, we're going to move over into those three downward trends, starting with our first one. And we are talking about San Diego Comic-Con. Of course, unless you lived on the rock, news came out this week that this year's San Diego Comic-Con has been canceled. A lot of people got the hashtag sad face. But we have some good news. Yeah, you can't go to San Diego Comic-Con, but we're seeing... A uh, large rise of virtual and online Comic Cons, one that we even spoke highly of just the other day on a recent episode of our podcast, right? That's right. Just debuting this week, brand new episode of Simpleman's Comics and Friends right here on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, as well as everywhere you get your audio podcasts. We had Chad and Drew from the Comic Corps, two of the uh, people behind the scenes working to get mainframe Comic Con to you this weekend. Uh, we're talking April 25th and 26th live on the Comic Core YouTube channel. Uh, we're talking panels. We're talking uh, uh, Artist Alley. We're talking, uh, you know, uh, opportunity to uh, uh, talk with dealers and uh, to see what dealers are offering and where you can buy from dealers, kind of like a, a virtual con floor. Uh, and, you know, you're going to see everything from Hollywood guests to independent comic creators and everything in between. It is a great lineup. Uh, it's very, uh, we're very excited to be a part of it. Brian and myself, we will be hosting the Mad Cave Studios uh, panel. Uh, and that is a, a company that we've worked with in the past, definitely a company we like. And we're gonna be bringing our A game to mainframe Comic Con this weekend. Yeah, I also wanna say kudos to Comic Core. Chuck Letter Comics, everyone that's involved with putting that mainframe Comic Con together, they were able to put that together in a matter of weeks, where a lot of these cons, man, they have so much time to prep. Now, I understand it's online, so it's a little bit less logistically involved, but either way, those guys really grinded it out, and, and within a short time period of a few weeks, they were able to put together something that's going off this weekend that, I mean, kudos to them. I don't know how they're doing it, but it's heavily involved, and they got some great guests. But yeah. moving over into the next downward trend, we are going to talk a little bit about that variant market that's kind of with everything that's going on. We're seeing some variants that I want to say penny on the dollar, but there's great buying opportunities if yeah. you're a variant hunter right now. Yeah. So there's obviously some outliers, right? You're, you're kind of um, your core hot variants that were already like really hot recently. They've, they've maintained value pretty well, but you've really got to think about what drives variant covers. Um, you know, People need to be talking about them. People need to be buying them. They need to be drying up. Uh, all of these things are not happening because we're in a period where more and more copies are getting put on 
eBay because people are trying to A, raise funds, and B, um, you know, they're, there's just free time. So all of those books that they haven't gotten to selling, they're getting to selling. I know, Brian, you've actually even taken part in that. So that's kind of uh, the situation that we're in. And there's a lot of books that have really dried up, which has, have caused prices to raise. You showed me a Power Girl variant the other day that you were surprised at the price of. And that's a prime example because it's just a book you just don't see come yeah. up as often now you've pulled it out of your stash you go put one on ebay it adds to the total available number of that book that's available which the variant market is very dependent on first appearance market is completely different animal that you can have so many copies of a first carnage carnage gets a title to the movie um it's the most basic and plain title but for whatever reason we knew Carnage was coming, right? But uh, because Carnage is in the Venom title, uh, you know, it's got to be headline news on every website. Yeah, but you get a title and then the movie's also pushed back. <laughs> right. You get a title, movie's pushed back, but comic company, comic websites are throwing that out there like it's content because, you know, everybody's hurting for it. And you have them people that are like, whoop, Carnage? Carnage, <laughs> right. And then, then they're running and buying. Um, gosh, gosh darn, three six to one. Right, and they're buying copies of 361. They're buying 344. They're yeah, buying Cleves the Cassidy. And... They're buying the second print of 361, a book that started to heat up. And so you see that with first appearances, dozens and dozens of copies of the same book. But when I'm often talking about, say, like the IDW stuff or some of the books that are less scarce, that maybe, say, some of those hidden gems that were 1 in 100 that were selling for – below ratio already they're already down to like 50 bucks some of those have dropped to like 30 bucks yeah because it's also important to note that there was variants out there that were never hot <laughs> right but you right, know right. and you and mentioned uh, jim lee I, I love those uh the pencil variants that he was yep. doing at the early rebirth but um that gives us a good segue into the the last one on the three down and we're talking dc comics and this one you don't even you can talk about comics in general right dc comics kind of down but this also we're talking market trends so the news that came out this week with what dc comics put the news out for made a lot of people unhappy wouldn't you say yeah yeah i mean it frustrates me to be honest with you um because first off you and i full disclosure we're fans of dc comics right we're fans of the characters we're fans of the stories we're fans of the people that work there we've had um you know a lot we're fans of several writers we've had relationships with people you know it just it so i i'm not down talking every single human being that works at DC Comics. Um, those who still work there because they, you know, DC Comics on a yearly basis likes to lay off a large percentage of their workforce, but that's just reality. And, um, you know, we have a lot of reports coming out about this current situation involving DC Comics. And I'll say this some stuff we have from very trusted sources, but it's not something that like is a like, public confirmed information. And some stuff is just really out there. So, so like unconfirmed, we've heard of mass layoffs. We've heard of DC outsourcing things like departments, like public relations. And that can have a large effect on when you have like a public relations company that may be great at PR, but they're not attuned to a specific industry. If you don't know the comic book industry specifically. Comic book publishing isn't the same as publishing. Publishing in general, right. Because you're dealing with a, a secondary market. We've got some announcements this week from Don, from uh, from DC that they rolled out in a, almost a positive manner, as if to say, "Hey, look, we're 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 doing things." And what are they doing? They're bringing comics back, and it's for you guys, I, hey. right? It's for you. It's for you. They're doing it for you, Brian. They know you miss all those DC comic stories, so they're doing it for you. That's bullshit. This is this is a disaster waiting to happen because what we've got going on right now is several different things. There's so many layers to to me how much of a mess this is. And I'll say, comment in the comment section and let us know what you think about this specific situation. But is this really a feasible thing for shipments to all of a sudden start showing up at shops and then for shops to have to make decisions about whether or not they're prepared to handle it? You've got states that are still on complete shutdown. It's not an even situation. We are really getting to see state politics at work going with this COVID situation. And I'm not going to get into politics, but it just, it does affect people on a different state by state basis. And this DC Comics news doesn't bring that into account at all. 
Secondly, we're rushing to slam a whole bunch of books out all at once. On this Thursday, the 23rd, retailers have three FOC dates worth of DC Comics books they have to put in an order for. That is an astounding amount of books. How do you even predict what your purchase kind of like demand is at this time? Then we've got the fact that Diamond says, wait, you're not going to knock us out of the game. We're still in business. So we're still going to have Diamond books when we reopen and we're DC Comics books. So as a retailer now, you have an option of this new distribution system or the old distribution system. And the fact that you're gonna have people choosing two different paths are gonna have DC books release at two different time periods from multiple different stores. And that is gonna mess up the hobby. It's gonna be confusing. It's gonna cause artificial spikes in prices of books because the, the full amount of the books won't hit the market all at once. And finally, my biggest issue with this, Brian, is the structure of it at all. Now, I've been clamoring since this whole situation started for a change in the distribution system of comics because we can't have a monopoly on the distribution of comics. One company can't do it. They're not incentivized to make changes. They're not incentivized to improve. So DC Comics went and got two new distributors, brand new. So new, they filed their information with GoDaddy like two weeks ago. So we've got UCS comic distribution and we've got lunar comic distribution and it sounds like two great names of two brand new companies but it's not it's dcbs discount comic book service the same website that people have been buying basically wholesale to the public for years and midtown comics the site that we all shop at when we can't get books anywhere else and they are now going to be your distributors and you may say, have your own reasons for not liking one or two of the brands. But let me explain something to you. As a retailer, you're now asking me to go to my competitor to buy product. You're, you're, you're incentivizing my competitor in a way that makes it a completely unfair market. And this is a short-term decision that will have long-term impact on the hobby. I honestly am a huge DC Comics fan. I love DC Comics. But... I don't understand the decision-making that often goes on at the corporate level of that company. And the reality of the situation is I'm hearing retailers say they're going to stop stocking DC comics altogether. I'm sorry, but that's going to hurt DC more than it's going to hurt the LCS system. Yeah. It's a lot to digest. And I think DC, I understand that. I don't even want to say they're trying to survive because it's, it's Warner Brothers, bro. It's AT&T above Warner yeah. Brothers. They don't need this piddly ass amount of money. It's, 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 it's greed. Yeah. And there's no, like you said, we, I enjoy DC stories, but I, to make a point, I could live without them as well, but definitely downward trend. Again, like Jack said, let us know in the comments, let us know in the comments, what you think about DC comics. And then of course, let us know in the comments. What do you think about this? This, what do you think about the uptrends, the downtrends? What do you think is up and down? We always love to hear that as well. But that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Simple Men's Comics. Make sure you guys go out there and check out that Simple Men's Comics and Friends podcast about mainframe comic-con and more importantly make sure you guys tune into that comic-con this weekend it's on comic mainframe comic-con.com and comic core's youtube channel this is brian jack we'll see you guys in the next video